So just real fast here, uh, the CEO of Tether, probably one of the most important uh, companies or entities in cryptocurrency. Uh, this CEO has tweeted out the following. I'm just going to read it and then we can analyze it a little bit. He says, prediction, quantum computing is still very far from any meaningful risk of breaking Bitcoin cryptography. Quantum resistant addresses will eventually be added to Bitcoin before there is any serious threat. All people alive and that have access to their wallets will move Bitcoin into new quantum resistant addresses. Any Bitcoin in lost wallets, including Satoshi, if not alive, will be hacked and put back in circulation. So let's parse this. He's not saying it's going to happen tomorrow or immediately, but this is one of the most important people in crypto. And he's saying that eventually these early addresses like Satoshi's million coins will be hacked by quantum computers and those that haven't moved to the upgraded version whenever it exists will watch as their wallets are drained, including these million Satoshi coins. And uh, so to think about the impact of that, it's not so much the impact on security, right? Because new transactions would be safe if they have a quantum resistant algorithm that actually works. Uh, where they're in trouble is what happens to the rarity? What happens to the rarity and what happens to the price and just the whole market when a million coins from the early days are suddenly shuffled off and slowly sold on exchanges, or maybe not slowly, maybe somebody sells all million of them at once. What does that do to the underlying confidence in Bitcoin? So something to think about here. And then of course, the other big story, which I did a little video on, uh, Trump and his administration are starting to use Guantanamo Bay, starting to use Guantanamo as a holding uh, location for some of these migrants who are being deported. Some of these criminal migrants with violent histories are literally being housed at Guantanamo before being sent back to their home countries. It's like something out of a QAnon post from 2017 or 2018. And now in Trump's second term, it's actually happening. A lot of other far out stuff is happening with this audit of the government through the uh, Department of Government Efficiency. And you see these people shrieking in the media who are literally paid by the agency that Elon Musk is, is uh, dismantling. So they found that half a billion dollars went to this internews network. And this lady funded more than 6,000 journalists, gave them their talking points, gave them their income. And it's coming from us, coming from the taxpayers, about as corrupt as it comes. So rather than a free press, Rather than a free media, you have a media that was literally funded by an arm of the federal government and given talking points to maintain certain narratives and to shoot down other narratives. Absolutely mind-blowing. So uh, I got to leave this one here. A lot of stuff going on today. Just wanted to give you guys an update on that. So people are talking about the quantum computing threat to cryptocurrency. And again, it's not going to happen tomorrow. But when it happens, it's going to be really disruptive. And it won't be limited to crypto. As I've said before, when these systems can crack one password, they can conceivably crack all passwords. All encrypted traffic can be decrypted, given a sufficiently powerful uh, quantum computer, which means credit card transactions are no longer useful, and even bank balances won't be well protected. Uh, so, very interesting times, and... Uh, I'll leave this one here, I guess. I'm dealing with uh, with some harassment issues. But we're just going to sue this individual who's harassing me. We already have a team of lawyers looking through all of her emails. And she claims she's entitled to half my money. She had no say in the companies I invested in. It was my capital, not hers. Uh, she's had no part in this channel, no part in my growth as a journalist or investor. And this is a person I broke up with two months ago because she had a meltdown. A meltdown, which I recorded and said a bunch of times she didn't love me and she didn't want to get married. Hey, fair enough. If you say that to somebody two days before your planned wedding, <laughs> how could I not get cold feet? She said she didn't love me and she didn't want to get married. Hey, you know, that's the deal then. <laughs> so two months go by, and then I start getting these harassing emails from her again. Uh, two months ago when I broke up with her, she sent me all these emails hoping that I'd die in a plane crash. Not very nice for some to say to somebody who travels a lot, somebody who uh, flies often. Not a very nice thing to say and, and to email repeatedly, 
hope that I died in a fiery plane crash, and now she's harassing me, and she claims that we were common law married. I didn't know this. I never agreed to this. She claims that we were actually in a common law marriage, when in reality, we were just engaged, and then I broke up with her when she had this crazy meltdown and admitted she was using me and didn't love me. And so again, we've got a team of lawyers looking through all of her emails, and rather than be harassed or silenced when I finally have all my platforms back and I finally have the resources to do what I want to do in life, and we can bring the fulcrum researchers back from many years ago, we're bringing the researchers back, folks. <laughs> this is our era. This is absolutely our era. And so again, the lawyers are going to deal with her. I'm going to keep doing me. Obviously, if every time you got in a relationship with somebody, they could claim half your money randomly afterwards, I don't think... You know, I don't think capitalism would work in America. If every single time you're in a relationship with somebody, they, they just turn around two months later, oh, you didn't know it, but we were actually common law married. We were secret married and you didn't know it. Well, not according to my attorneys. And uh, yeah, I'm not going to let this take over my life. I've dealt with harassers before. The only difference is this is someone who came into my life to learn about me, learn everything about me, and then use it against me. Some of you guys have said, do you think John Podesta sent her into your life? You know, I don't think so. I think this is an opportunist, but who knows? Who knows? I've dealt with some weird stuff in life, and I've already been so vindicated in terms of the success of Bitcoin and Ethereum, and in terms of all the P. Diddy stuff. Uh, now it's coming out that Diddy was running an island that may have been worse than Epstein's island. He joked years ago about how he runs an island that's off the grid, where they do all kinds of things that you can't do in the U.S. What does that mean? What kind of stuff can you not do in the U.S. that you need an island off the grid to do? Uh, so strange times, we were vindicated on so much of this stuff years ago. I paid the price in terms of being deplatformed for a little while, but I couldn't feel better about things today. Again, we're under consideration for a White House press pass. That's huge. I hope we get it, fingers crossed. And uh, we're working on the Pentagon press pass, a little more involved. I would like to get that for sure. Uh, and that's it. Thank you guys so much for the support and the love, and you'll hear from me again soon.